Shalom. Kon Laila Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakwakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. What has been will be again. And I really hadn't decided on a title, but that's probably what I'll go with. Because we're going to see events circle back around or things come back full circle. And the reason I say that is because we know history repeats itself. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. So there's even some speculation that Michelle Obama may be running for president in 2024. Now, we may not even see a presidential election in the year 2024. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe or maybe not. But nevertheless, our spirits are eternal and come back in the same lot that we were in in the old days. So this is why we're able to make predictions based off of historical analysis. And I know one of the popular sayings of the apostles, we must know the history in order to understand the mystery. So these spirits are doing what they were created to do. And really, these are extras in the movie. Those that are not of the Lord's elect of Israel were created to test, tempt, and try the faith of the Lord's elect. So these are extras in his movie. <laughs> Let's go here. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, and verse... Let's go to verse 39. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 38. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. So this is talking about that city that's built on blood. In Nahum 3, there's a direct correlation to ancient Nineveh. So America is the compilation of all the ancient pagan kingdoms built on witchcraft, idolatry, and sorcery. Verse 39, Therefore the wild beasts of the desert with the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there, and the owl shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Now this connects back to Isaiah, that it's going to be a desert for unclean beasts. <laughs> Isaiah 34. Excuse me. See right here. Isaiah 34, verse 14. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. So the Lord is being facetious or sarcastic here, describing a land that was once a paradise, a great glorious kingdom that all the nations flocked to. Now 
a memorial of that remembrance is going to be established. Unclean beasts are going to flock here. So he's making a memorial of a wicked kingdom, just like Sodom and Gomorrah with desert creatures crawling all over the place. <clears throat> Serve as a reminder or an example as to how not to live. <clears throat> Let's go here. So everything is being brought to the light in these last days. <clears throat> See if I can find that. Let's go to Luke real quick. Luke 12, verse 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. So right now, the housetops is this internet that we're using, or the World Wide Web, a global communications network. So just, <laughs> excuse me, just like the situation with T.D. Jakes, the situation with the Epstein list, many celebrities and political, economic, and military leaders. So the wicked is being stripped or made bare. In other words, exposed on their wicked deeds. <coughs> Let's keep going. Jeremiah 49, verse 17. Let's go to verse 16. <clears throat> thy terribleness have deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. So this kingdom has reached great heights that no nation had ever dreamed or imagined America would exalt itself to. So it has a space force. Its global reach spans across five major continents. It has over 800 military bases around the world and a military spending budget of about $850 billion per year. <laughs> so it has U.S. embassies in practically every nation around the world. And its gross domestic product, haven't looked that up in a while. <clears throat> Let's see here real quick. A gross domestic product of about $23.32 trillion. So this country is, not only is it a mass consumer, but it's also a mass producer. <clears throat> but that's all changing. When you look at its national debt, that's already exceeded $33 trillion. So it's upside down now. Remember, this place was blessed when the Israelites did not know who they were, assimilating themselves, becoming the glue or the main fabric in the building of this kingdom, helping to hold it together, just like the Israelites built ancient Egypt. But when the Israelites begin to be released under Moses, then all of that change. Egypt began to fall. <clears throat> oh, here. <clears throat> Jeremiah 49 and 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation 
Every one that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. So the nations around the world is going to see this destruction live on live satellite TV <clears throat> signals being transferred. So they're going to witness this thing across the global communications network and just go, you know, oh man, you know, because a lot of them are going to lose their, they're going to lose a lot of money that they had tied up in investments in this place with global commerce. <coughs> Jeremiah. 49 and 18, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. So this is what helps us to understand that this is not talking about an ancient land that's that's already destroyed. It's making a comparison to Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's going to be destroyed by fire like Sodom and Gomorrah and not be inhabited <clears throat> by any people. <clears throat> so Sodom and Gomorrah, usually when we talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, we just talk about those two cities. But here we find that Sodom and Gomorrah was comprised of five cities. Let's go to Genesis 14 and 2. Let's go to verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Araphel, king of Shinar, Ariat, king of Alasar, Kedolamar, king of Elam, and Tadal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, Shanab, king of Atma, Atma, the third city, and Shemeber, king of Zeboim. The fourth city is Zeboim, and the king of Bala, which is Zoar. So, Sodom, Gomorrah, Atma, Zeboim, and Zoar, the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. All these were joined together in the vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. <coughs> so, Sodom and Gomorrah is comprised of five major cities. So this reminds me of Isaiah 19. <clears throat> Isaiah 19. Let's go to verse 18. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. So that one, that's the city of destruction, is North America, the daughter of Babylon, also known as spiritual Sodom and Egypt. It's not by accident that this truth is being broadcasted or the men of the Lord are teaching on the five major continents, which is the four corners of the earth. It's not by accident. Five also represents power, power. Matter of fact, let's get this real quick. Micah, <coughs> I think it's three and five. Micah three. I am four. Let's try it this way. Haven't been there in a while. Michael 3 and 8, not 3 and 5. Michael 3 and 8. But truly, I am full of power 
by the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. So the prophets are an extension of the Most High through Yahweh Shai, his right arm extending to his sword or battle axe, the men of the Lord. <clears throat> Let's go back to Isaiah 19, <clears throat> the book of Isaiah chapter 19, verse 14. The Lord have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. So this is an indoctrination based on the worship of other gods, that androgynous spirit from the queen of heaven worship, like Asherah, <clears throat> Diana, Demeter, Athena, Anana. They even made a song, Anana, what's my name, you see? All is shrouded under goddess worship or pagan paganism. <clears throat> so that perverse spirit is the wine of Babylon. <clears throat> Isaiah 19 and 15. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail, branch or rush may do. So the Lord is drying this place up. Oh, matter of fact, I think it's Genesis. Genesis, uh, maybe it's 13 and 10. We'll see. Um, let's do it this way. Yeah, right here. Genesis 13 and 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. So this place is spiritual Sodom and Egypt now. A reincarnation of the spirits from the old days. But it's being dried up. Just like the Lord dried up ancient Egypt. Especially when, when, when the um, Israelites began to get released. Who do you think was working all of the money making tools and assets in Egypt? The Israelites were. Their laborers. <clears throat> their builders. They're innovators. Over 95% of America's inventions come from the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. So just like now, the Israelites are falling back and turning away from having faith and diligent work towards building this empire that they don't have any buy-in or part or a long-term investment in. They're just laboring to die broke and pass debts down to their relatives. <clears throat> Isaiah 19 and 16. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. So the prophets are shaking the hand through rebuke, <laughs> correction of teaching the word and rebuking this system through the Bible. <clears throat> the Bible is a rod of correction or a whipping stick. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself 
because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he have determined against it. <clears throat> so when the prophets are prophesying about the nuclear destruction of the daughter of Babylon, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, that is evoking fear. They're talking about judgment, slavery of the wicked elite. They're talking about two-thirds of the Israelites being burned with fire. So this is creating panic and fear. They're talking about martial law, economic collapse, and military drafts, a major world war. So there is a terror that's consuming the land. And really, a lot of what we don't talk about much Many of these rulers, governors, and leaders are having nightmares, apparitions. They're losing sleep at night. <coughs> Let's go ahead and close out. A part of that shaking is here. <clears throat> so this is why Yahweh Shai makes reference as in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Here's why. Well, part of the reason why. Isaiah 24. The book of Isaiah chapter 24. Let's go to verse 17. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. So he's speaking to Edom that's ruling in the last eon before the rebirth of the Davidic dynasty. Isaiah 24 and 18. It shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit and he that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. So the shaking starts with the hand, rebuke, correction, through the scriptures as a filter. But this is activating the angels to bring forth judgment by fire and other judgments leading up to that. <clears throat> like death by Gurkha troops or riots, civil wars, leading up to that, even manipulating the minds of the unfaithful to take the sea hip or the mot B. <clears throat> so it's a build up to the fire. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. What makes the earth move and shake and reel to and from on its axis like a drunkard? Nuclear missiles. And the newer missiles, it only takes two to obliterate the western half of the United States, which is about 5,000 square miles. And then it takes another two to take out the eastern portion of the United States. So these new missiles are no joke, but this land is prophesied to be saturated like rain coming down, a fire, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> we just read it, the windows from on high. So it reminds me of um, Noah's time. The flood. So this land is going to be flooded with fire. The windows from on high are these missiles coming into this, coming from the, some of them are going to be shot from the outer firmament. But the newer missiles can get here faster. And then the second and third order valleys of missiles are going to go through the outer firmament where they have a third phase 
reentry nuclear payload in its head. But those are going to be used in the second, third, and fourth order valleys of missiles. They're not going to be used first. The faster missiles are going to be used first. The new hyper and supersonic missiles with nuclear capability. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get this real quick about that being compared to <clears throat> to rain. <clears throat> Genesis 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, let's go ahead and read this one. <coughs> Genesis 7. It's a certain one that I wanted to get. Genesis 7. Let's go ahead and read verse 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And Every living substance that I have made while I destroy from off the face of the earth. <clears throat> so these missiles is going to be the new flood. This is why the Bible talks about the lake of fire in Revelation. <clears throat> Several places that it shows up. See, Revelation 19 and 20. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So brimstone destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> so the elements of these nuclear missiles contain these different stones and, and uranium and things of that nature, similar to what was in the composition of the brimstone that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And the false prophet is the Vatican out of the Roman Catholic Church. The location is the Vatican, but the false prophet is the Roman Catholic Church. The beast is the system, a global network or business enterprise under Edom, the Dukes of Edom, the international elite, the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilts, the Gettys, the DuPonts, Oppenheimers. Notice Oppenheimer helped come up with the technology out of the house of Timon or Timon, German bloodlines. But they're Edomites, which go back to Amalek, most of them, the elites, and which deceived them that had received the mark. So they're going to manipulate the minds of the unfaithful to accept the bark of this business enterprise, this global new world order. <clears throat> and then that worship his image. They're using economics. And what they're doing is they're going to come up with a clean slate for those that want to be debt free and be able to buy or sell in this new digital system under the central bank digital currency. So this is going to be the big, the big carrots that they wave in front of everybody. <clears throat> These both are cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So we see two comparisons. The flood that destroyed the ancient world which is a lake of fire in the modern days. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So many people are going to be in the party mode or the comfort zone, settle on their leaves. <clears throat> and then the brimstone, the missiles, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
so shall it be in this time. So we're reliving the similar characteristics in the environment that was prevalent back then. Spiritual Sodom and Egypt. So the key players are back in their lot in the last days. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.